Good morning, and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Santa Monica's online worship. We are so glad that you are joining us this morning. We come together as the community of God to worship together with our hearts as one. I invite everyone to leave a comment to let us know that you're joining us and post a picture of what worship looks like for you this morning. We'd love to see it. It has been another full and chaotic week. We are all holding the uncertainty and stress of the past few weeks, and so I invite you to take a few deep breaths as we begin worship. Breathe in, acknowledging all that you might be holding in your mind, in your heart, and in your body. And breathe out, releasing the grip of tension, remembering that God holds each one of us at all times. As the prelude begins, let us continue to breathe deeply, centering ourselves in God's presence and preparing our hearts and our minds for worship.
I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. Please join me in the call to worship. O oh mortal, can these bones live? Only the Lord God knows. O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The Spirit of God will be our life and the grace of God our righteousness. O oh people, hope in the Lord. With the Lord, there is steadfast love. God, who raised Jesus from the dead, gives life to our mortal bodies also. Praise be to God. God indeed gives us life. And today, as we celebrate our mission and common life together, we give thanks for the liveliness that is ever-present in this community of faith. Today, we would like to highlight some of the many ministries that uh, are still at work here in this church to uphold one another in our community. Firstly, many of our opportunities for fellowship and for study are continuing in this time through the use of technology. The men's Bible study is going to be meeting by Zoom at its regular Tuesday morning time. Uh, Lenten yoga will continue on Wednesdays uh, through Facebook Live. We are also hoping to add more of these opportunities in the coming weeks, so do stay, um, do stay in touch with us and read your emails and stay up to date on our communications. Secondly, we are reaching out during this time of isolation to offer conversation and prayer and connection for many people. And we are, have, we've even been able to connect some people uh, who have not been able to go out to get groceries for many reasons with the people who we have who have uh, much availability uh, for going and getting groceries so that they can be delivered um, to our people. If you would like someone to pray with you during this time of isolation, please reach out. We would be very happy to pray with you over the phone. And lastly, this time presents us all with an opportunity, a beautiful opportunity to show the world that we are the church and that the church is very much still alive. So I encourage you all to reach out to one another, reach out to those who are part of our church community, reach out to people who are not, to your neighbors and friends and family members, and tell them that you're thinking about them and share with them the love of Christ. Through this, God indeed gives us life. We thank God for these opportunities for fellowship, for worship, and for service. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel reading comes from the book of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. 
He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear sisters and brothers, on this fourth Sunday in Lent, this is the first of our live stream only worship services. We're so thankful for the technology that makes it possible for us to worship together in this way this morning. And though we cannot all see one another in person, as we so love, we see with the eyes of our hearts. We can sense one another's presence and rejoice in the love of God that holds us close and binds us together. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. This morning's gospel reading brings the story of a man blind from birth. We read just a short passage of a much longer story, which I commend to you. The man was apparently sitting or standing along the road when Jesus passed by. Jesus saw him and simply spat on some dirt, rubbed it over the man's eyes, and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And when he did so, the man could see. It's an amazingly straightforward story, really, but it seems to prove that old adage that no good deed goes unpunished. The man can see, you'd think that would be perceived as a good thing. But as the story continues, all kinds of people seem to take offense. They all have points to make and questions to ask. The disciples ask who was responsible for the man's blindness. The neighbors ask how he received his sight. The Pharisees asked how Jesus dare heal someone on the Sabbath. Some call the man born blind a sinner and insist that sinners surely can't see. Others keep asking just who is this Jesus anyway. John says that they were so divided in all their questioning that they finally turned back to the once blind man and asked, it was your eyes he opened. What do you say about him? Maybe that's the most important question for all of us this morning. The question we need to ask ourselves. He's opened my eyes to a variety of kinds of things. So what do I say about him? The once blind man in today's story doesn't pretend to understand all that has happened to him. But that does not stop him from moving to a profound testimony of faith. One thing I know, he says, that though I was blind, now I see. All the while, those detractors all around were finding ways to use their clever questions to justify their lack of faith in their frustration at their inability to pin Jesus down. 
they become more and more hostile, more and more angry, and finally drive the healed man away. But through it all, the once blind man keeps moving closer and closer to Jesus. Each time he answers their questions, his profession of faith goes a little deeper. Who is this man who opened your eyes? A man called Jesus, he tells acquaintances at first. And then when questioned by the Pharisees, he replies, he is a prophet. When they next accuse him of being Jesus' disciple, he says, never since the world began, has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind? If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They drive him out. Jesus again goes to him and asks, Do you believe in the Son of Man? You have seen him, and I am that one. The man replies, Lord, I believe. I know that among our gathered community this morning are those who have experienced healing from physical ailments. Among us are those who have experienced healing from addiction. Among us are those who have experienced healing from depression and mental illness. Among us are those who have experienced healing from homelessness and unemployment. Among us are those who have experienced healing from grief. Among us are those who have experienced healing from fear and hopelessness. Among us are those who have experienced healing from broken relationships, from broken dreams, from broken hearts. Among us are those who have experienced healing in the midst of illness and challenging circumstances. And so by our lives, we witness to the healing power of God's grace within us and all around us. If someone were to ask me, as they often do, what's really the point of being part of a church? I say that when you come down to it, this is where God's grace is manifest in the world and in us. This is where God's love incarnate in Jesus Christ, the light of the world, sometimes works miracles that bring healing and restore hope. So let's hold one another close, now more than ever. We're not perfect. And sure, sometimes often we slip into the ranks of those tiresome interrogators all around Jesus who can't stop snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. But that is never the best of who we are. We are the church, the people God has called, the people Christ continues to heal and make whole through the saving work of the Holy Spirit. We are those who know that we stand in the need of grace and salvation in and through Christ Jesus. And so, let's find in these days more time for scripture and prayer. I believe that as we walk together through this time of the coronavirus, that our eyes will be opened in new ways to people to faith, and to the world around us. We've all been hampered by a number of what we might call blind spots. 
And in these new, strange, thoroughly changed times, we too see in new ways. We now see our own vulnerability. We see that life really isn't about our own sense of success and control. We see our utter dependence on one another, how we need the many kindnesses of friends and strangers alike. We see into the gift of deeper relationships with our own family members, children, spouses, partners, pets, with whom we are all of a sudden spending much more time. We see anew the beauty of the morning light, the rainbow in the sky after the rain, the gift of each new day. We see our total interconnectedness to one another and to God. In these days, may we draw closer to one another and closer to Christ, the physician of life. May our eyes see his love, our hearts see his blessed hope, that we may all be restored through him to newness of life. Be the bridge and be the hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. We come to pray. During Lent, we take time to slow down and listen for God's voice. As we enter this time of prayerful re reflection, we will pray with a series of short prayers that conclude with, hear our prayer. After this, we will respond together, Lord, have mercy. Let us be in prayer. season of Lent, give us calm amidst the storm. Remind us to bring our fears and worries to you, knowing that with you all things are possible. Let peace be in our hearts. Hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Let us be filled with with the presence of God's compassion toward ourselves and all living beings. 
realizing that we are all nourished from the same source of life. May we live so that others are not deprived of air, food, water, shelter, or the chance to live. Hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. In this time of uncertainty, let us pray for those at high risk for illness, for the marginalized and the poor. Keep them healthy and free from all sickness. Embolden us to be beacons of hope and love and help us to practice social distancing while not losing our connections to one another as a community. Hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those working in medical facilities, for doctors, nurses, and staff. Protect them as they minister to the sick and for researchers and community leaders who are working toward solutions. Hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all students and teachers. Give them the strength they need to navigate school in new ways. With schools closed, feed those who will go hungry and shelter all students who have no place to live. We pray for parents. Build in them strength and fortitude for the time ahead and give them the words and witness to be wise counselors and compassionate caregivers. Hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are in need of your healing presence. Today we pray for Dennis Payne and David Searfoss. Merciful God, we know that your heart overflows with compassion for your whole creation. We come to you in this time of anxiety and uncertainty. Pour out your spirit on all people living with illness or who are living with anxiety about illness. Be with those who tend to the needs of the sick. Strengthen us all in body and spirit. Console us when anxious. Comfort us in grief and hearten us in discouragement. Help to remind us that you always claim us as your own and you are with us wherever we go. We pray through Christ, our Savior and Healer, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to worship today in the midst of much uncertainty. We hear stories of scarcity, but we remember that in God, we each have an abundance. This week, so many of you have offered stories of generosity, generosity experienced in neighbor and stranger alike, generosity exper experienced through this very community of faith. It's generosity, not hoarding or scarcity, that will get us through this time. 
Generosity reminds us to value what we have. It connects us in this time of isolation and helps us to see that we are stronger together. But most importantly, generosity, sharing from our God-given abundance, makes us part of something greater than ourselves. It makes us part of God's plan to uphold this world through this community of faith, the body of Christ. Your continued financial support of this congregation is more important now than ever. You may mail your gift to the church or drop it into the mail slot of our offices during any day of the week. You can also give online or mail a check through your online banking program. You can also find a link to our secure online giving page down below this video. May God grow us in generous and joyful hearts. Thank you. Let's join together in the unison prayer of dedication. Holy God, giver of life, we thank you for raising us up and joining us together as one people, your people, flesh and bone in the body of Christ. As you have delivered us from death, use our lives to proclaim the good news of new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and give thanks. Amen. Thank you.